When I, how I got involved in this whole thing, this whole movie, was I um, saw a shield on there, was a red, white, and blue shield. It said, American Lockdown, Down American Patriots Needed. I left a short message, and that's how I got involved in the whole thing. On Facebook? On Facebook, yes. And I didn't know what it was. I just left a, a little message, and they called me. Basically what we do here is we uh, we run out four rooms for our Airbnb. This building is um, it's separate from the main house and we have one over there. And people come from all over the world. They come here, they'll come up here for a weekend just to do nothing and just sit here and look around. And then they get to watch the wild animals in the yard and stuff. And they like to come here and look at the stars and whatnot because they can't even see them over there. <laughs> and they like the peace and quiet. Well, if you, you know, if you live in the city, if things go to shit, you're kind of screwed. But out here, you can beat yourself for a long time. Yeah. You don't need to worry about all that crap. Well, I'll tell you, everything that you can think of, just about for, um, in the wild, comes through here. We have wild turkeys that come through here. There's deer that come through here all the time. We had wolf back in there, mountain lions. We've had bears that come through. They don't stay around very long. But what really pisses me off is when you get these people that they come into these places and then they they go to where they shouldn't go and um, do shit they shouldn't do, and then uh, the bear attacks them and then they kill the bear. You know, so you gotta use some logic. You shouldn't leave garbage laying out at your camp, and you should never so you should never camp in a soft-sided camper in that country, mm. ever. Like a tent? Yeah, because that's the guy I was telling you about last night, he was in a tent. He got drug out of his tent, and his buddy went and got him, and uh, or went over to pick him up, and asked him if he was okay, and he said, I am for now. So he said he went back to get the car and came back and the grizzly in the meantime came and got the guy and drug him off and ate him. And uh, so his buddy, he died and uh, it was pretty, it was pretty gruesome. They, uh, they peeled him from the inside out. I mean, he was actually peeled in inside out. It was just, it was just really kind of, it was gross. Um, I had never seen or heard of Borat in my life. I had never seen a Borat movie. I had no idea who he was uh, before. Or I actually tell this movie was done filming. So I had never seen him before in my life. The house they had us in was roughly about 40 miles north of Olympia, I believe. They took us up there. They didn't show us where we were going. They took our phones, our guns, and everything. And so um, we had no idea where we were at. They wouldn't let us drive or anything. So that pickup there is not Jerry's, I don't believe. And um, so they must have taken him into town. Well, I had never met Jerry a day in my life till the day he walked in that house with Borat. So the uh, first time I'd ever met him. And then Borat told us his name was Arpoon. He didn't have anywhere to go and wanted to stay there. And of course it wasn't our house, but that was fine. We we uh, we knew what we were doing anyway, so that was fine with us. Um, I don't know whose house it is. Somebody must own it. He must own it or somebody owns it. I'm not sure. But um, it's um, it just wasn't ours like everybody thinks it was. 
they had us bring 10 out outfits of clothes and they made us change about two, three times a day to make it look like we had been there longer. Borat says in, or er, Sasha Cohen, says in his interviews that he was, so, he was there with us for five days and he said he ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner with us. With them undercover for five days. Um, and that meant, you know, waking up from first thing in the morning, the, you know, the moment I came out of my bedroom till going to sleep. He didn't. He, we ate one breakfast with him, I think, one lunch and one dinner. And so they made it look like we were there for a week with him, and we absolutely were not. Um, what people don't understand is they were trying to get us to drop our guard so that we, we would say bad things about people, different groups of people and whatnot. I really didn't care for that. And um, I knew that I didn't want to talk about people like that, so I didn't do it. Therefore, you don't see it in the movie. But what really bothered me was we were sitting in the living room and this girl named Charlotte, she came in and she started using the N-word. And she, was, she said she was checking her email and she was filming us. And I thought, what, what's going on? She took, made up a story about her father and her brother being somewhere and they turned around and these um, black people were chasing her around. And she was saying the n-word the whole time. She must have said it 20, 25 times uh, or more. And uh, you know, it's it just didn't it just didn't sound cool. It just wasn't nice and it just, uh, it didn't make us feel comfortable. Well, when we went to the gun rally, um, I had wrote a song that was uh, two pages long when we left they took us over to this parking lot and they put us in this pickup and he had this thing with onions around his neck and he had this great big poster board that said onions for young girls and um, I told him I said you know what we're not taking that uh, gun rally and so I took it away from him and I threw it in the back of the pickup and he really didn't like that but I said you're not taking it with and I says you don't do that in this country All right so then they took us right down in front and then he started singing that song and um, he, now that we know, he, with the interviews and stuff that he's doing, he's saying he had a bulletproof vest on. It's fairly rare. I mean, it happens occasionally. I mean, this was the first movie where I've had to wear a bulletproof vest. So... And it was getting really rude. And we're standing there with nothing on, no bulletproof vest, no security, nothing. And he goes up there and he points us out in the crowd saying that those are my two best buddies I wrote the song with, which was absolute bullshit because I wrote a song that had nothing to do with any of that. The only part of the song that was in mine were the first two lines about Obama. Yeah. And that was it. The doors are locked. Um, that was harrowing. Yeah. Does that happen to you frequently, or is that a fairly rare occurrence? Uh, it's fairly rare. I mean, it happens occasionally. I mean, this was the first movie where I've had to wear a bulletproof vest. So, you know, we were...